Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rechakwadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world enemy called Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give her praises, honor, and glory unto the Yahweh the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Akim wa Akwa. That's you, brothers. And few sincere sisters make your bodies living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who taught us the truth and rule well. Yeah, now we're going to continue to uh, go here into the book of Psalms, all right, this morning. And uh, let's see, we are on Psalms, the 19th chapter, all right? In this chapter, we have 14 verses. This morning, we'll just go through verses uh, 1 through 6. Uh, seven is pretty much kind of like a context change, but nonetheless, um, yeah, we're going to go through verses one through six. And as always, you know, Abiratiza, you know, the sincere sheep is edified. All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. So this is Psalm chapter 19. It says to the chief musician, a Psalm of David. It says, <clears throat> he says, the heavens declare the glory of the most high and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. So like, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the earth, and the words of the and their words to the end of the world, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Right, and of course, right, uh right. Of course upon a carnal um physical level yes he's speaking you know you can apply this to you know the handiwork of the lord when it goes into the uh the instruments of of the armies in the heavens man such as the sun the moon the stars right the clouds right the shemayim which is you know the firmament the heavens right and that very well indeed is the handiwork of yahweh bashma shah right and the lord as it speaks about in the book of romans the first chapter Right, how the invisible, how the visible things of the Lord. Let's grab this in Romans chapter one. Let me one second. Yep, this is uh, Romans chapter one and verse uh, twenty. It says, "For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even." His eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. That's right. All right. So we can learn a lot. Of, you know, we can learn. All right. Uh, about Yahweh Bashem al by the visible things that he created. You see. Right. But on a spiritual level here in the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter. Right. This is, you know, what <laughs> what we coin out here in Great Millstone. We coin this as, you know, one of the Internet scriptures, if you will. Right. Because uh, this Internet. Right. The. the by the Lord, because ultimately the internet was created for pushing forth this word, pushing forth this truth, right? Because Yahweh Shah told his disciples, right, in Acts, the first chapter, that you're going to be my witnesses. Let's get that real quick. This is Acts chapter 1, and then we're going to go to Matthew 28. This is Acts chapter 1 and verse 7. And he said unto them, um, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Right. And we're in the uttermost part of the earth, you know, which is going into you know, the, the Western Hemisphere, the, the latter end, the last to come on the scene, if you will. Right. And with us being his witnesses, the Lord raising up his witnesses or his prophets in Babylon, as he spoke through the uh, mouth of uh, Jeremiah, how the Lord is going to raise up prophets in Babylon, right? Where we are commanded, right, by the Great Commission in Matthew the 28th chapter to preach this truth into the end of the world, into the um, into all nations. This is Matthew chapter 28 and verse um 18 and Yahweh Shah came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, 
let's lay down some groundwork, right? And, and we're just getting these scriptures so we could, you know, pretty much set the set the tone for Psalms the 19th chapter. We're going to go back to it, right? But why did the Lord tell his disciples to go teach all nations? Because the Israelites were scattered into all nations pursuant to the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64, right? So the Lord is raising up his witnesses, his disciples, right? Ultimately, you know, the, the prophets, right, to, to preach, his truth to preach this truth unto the scattered Israelites. Now, we don't have camps in every single, you know, every single sector throughout the whole earth, every single city, right, or country in the whole earth. Right? There's not a great millstone camp in every single country. You know, although you do have, you know, uh, a lot of you know great millstone camps, you know, spread throughout the earth. You know, you have Tanzania, you got, you know, uh uh Jamaica. You got, uh, you know, um, you know, you got brothers in Holland, you know, all across the earth, Australia, right? But nonetheless, the the main catapulting, you know, uh, agent, if you will, that's, that's having this word to be pushed out, right, throughout the four corners of the earth is the internet, and this is what David is prophesying about, man. When you look at this scripture on a spiritual level, all right. The Lord didn't, he didn't allow the internet to be made, right? He didn't, the, the, the reason why the internet was made wasn't for, you know, TikTok, you know, people getting on TikTok and, you know, showing the latest fashion trends or whatever, or a booty shaking video. No, the reason why the internet was created is so, so this word, this truth can have free course. Let's grab that in the book of 2 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 3 and verse 1. Paul says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Now, let's go into this word or phrase free course. Strong's G, 5143, Traco. Strong's G, 5143, Traco. Okay, and what does it say? It says to run. Now, mind you, he's saying that, you know, pray that the word has free course, right? So, so we're going to this word free course. It means to run of persons in haste of those who run in a race, right? Because this doctrine is to be pushed out quickly, man. You see, this doctrine is to be pushed out quickly, right? As the, la as the Lord is raising us up. In the latter end of Esau's rule and reign of terror, right, we have to get this knowledge and obtain it quickly, man. You see, on the, in this third day, you see, starting around, uh, you know, um, you know, that third day, you know, coming around 1969, 1970, right? And ever since then, hey, the elect is being sealed, man, by this word having free course. It says, metaphor of doctrine Right. What is another word for doctrine? Teaching. Now, who's responsible for that teaching? Right. Uh, we just read it. Acts, the first chapter, in Matthew 28, the Lord's uh, disciples, which later became apostles. All right. It says of doctrine rapidly propagated. See, of doctrine rapidly propagated. Now, what's the quickest and most efficient way to push forth this doctrine? Through the internet, man. You see? And that's what we're going, that's what we're about to break down here in the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter. All right, like I said, just want to, you know, set some uh set some groundwork before we go back to it. So let's go back to it. This is Psalms chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of the most high. Now, when you read here in the book of Philippians, the third chapter. Right, the, the the hopefully elect or ultimately the elect, right? They're known to have their conversation where in the heavens, you see. Although we're in the earth, right? Our minds and our and our doctrine, our speech, right, is in the heavens with Yahweh Shah. This is Philippians chapter three and verse twenty. He says, "For our conversation, and what's our conversation? Is doctrine. All right, our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior Yahweh Shah." Hamashiach, Salakia, I read that wrong. It says, for our, our conversation is in heaven, 
from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. See? So let's go back to Psalm 19. He says, For the heavens declare the glory of the Most High. See? That's us speaking or preaching or uh, rapidly propagating this doctrine, man. See? That's the heavens that's declaring the glory of the Most High by case in point, what's happening right now. All right? I'm pre recording this lesson. All right? Soon, if the Lord says the same, I'm going to upload it. You see? And it's going to. It's going to be broadcasted on the internet, man. You see, particularly, uh, particularly YouTube. That's the hep. That's us having our conversation in heavens, All right? Because when you know when it's uploaded, you know it, it receives signals. All right, each time you know a brother or sister click on the video, all right, was apostle elders or brothers videos, all right, you click on it, and those signals come down from these particular, you know, uh, uh, radio towers having those frequencies, if you will, right. And those lines is, is, is connecting, you know, from your to your phone to those receivers. So it's all happening in the Shemayim, in the heavens. Everything that happens upon the face of the earth, man, is all orchestrated by Yahweh, by Shemal Shah. Yeah, Esau created it, but who, who put the spirit on Esau to do it? Yahweh, by Shemal Shah, for, for the elect's sake. Everything's for the elect's sake at the end of the day. Because the Lord knew that he would scatter us into the utmost part of the earth, right? And there's not going to be actual physical camps in each little secluded sector or area throughout the world. But all those as a part of the elect is going to hear the word preached unto them, man. You see? And, and the nitty gritty work of it is done by the internet. You see? And you can read uh, Matthew the 13th chapter. Yahweh Shai gives us a parable about uh, the internet, if you will, he speaks about how the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net, you know. So, but nonetheless, this is Psalms 19 and 1. It says, the heavens declare the glory of the most high and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It says day unto day. Oh, we got to get this. What is that? Second Ezra 6. Because what's being displayed in the heavens, if you will, what's 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 being broadcasted. It's truth, man. Brothers, opening up the Bibles, case in point, what we're doing right now, <laughs> and we're preaching, and it's, it's being uploaded to where the ears of the elect, right, is hearing, right, this truth. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6, and verse, as a matter of fact, let's start right here at verse 18, because we're literally in this, um, in this section of this prophecy that we're about to read. 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and 18, and it said, talking about the voice that uh, Ezra heard, which is ultimately going to Yahweh Shah, because it said uh, it sounded like the voice of many waters, which we know who that is. It says verse eighteen, and it said, "Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth." And we're that's happening right now. We're in those times where Yahweh Bashmah Shah is visiting the world that He made. How do we know that? By these particular signs and tokens that He told us to look out for, such as uproars of the people, you know, wars, rumors of wars famine right it says verse 19 and will begin to make inquisition of them meaning a diligent search right a judicial investigation right it says and i will begin to make in inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly and who's that that has hurt unjustly you edomites right you so-called white people uh, starting with you starting with you elites it says with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled, that's us. So this is said in the this is said in the uh, context of letting us know that what the Lord is going to make inquisition, right, of this devil in the latter times, right, when our affliction or when our captivity is almost done, and that's the case, man. We're about to be let out of this pit, you see. But in the midst of that, what's going to be happening? The uh, the, the uh, this, this word is going to have free course amongst the elect so we can get the get the correct doctrine, right? And understand, right, what the Lord is uh, looking for us to have, which is ultimately faith, right? But how does faith come? By hearing the word of the Most High. And how do we hear, right? Ultimately by this internet, man, right? Verse 20, he says, and when the world, and that world is talking about Esau, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens, meaning these signs. Check this out, verse 20. 
in the middle part, it says, the books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all together. You see that? He says, and so in the time of when the Lord is making inquisition of, of, this, of this devil, you know, and we know he's doing it, man. See, chariot sightings, right? Especially over here in Babylon, the great, but all across the world, right? The Lord is visiting this place, right? And our captivity is almost done. What do he say? The book shall be opened before the firmament, meaning before the Shemayim, the heavens, man. See? This is why a, a, we, we're, we're glued to, you know, to these sit downs, to these lessons, to these live uploads, man. You see? Because the Lord, he's, he's about to flip our captivity. But he's sealing us with his instructions first. And once the elect is sealed pursuant to Revelation, the seventh chapter, that's when those angels are going to let just let go of those winds, man. It's going to be complete. It's going to be complete chaos. But it's all right. Because at that point, the elect is already sealed. They have that mark, that the wa, that mark of a sign from exemption from judgment, man. You see? Because they've been sealed with, uh, with the truth. All right? So let's read that part again. Verse 20, it says, And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament, man. You see? All right, these, these, these live streams being uploaded. All right, coming back down to the earth, you know, in the form of, you know, those, those radio signals. All right, you kind of have to imagine it, you know, how those, you know, if you, if you see, like, frequencies, if you're able to, like, see through a camera's frequencies or whatnot, you know, you know how they have those special little cameras or whatnot where you can see frequencies. Well, that's what it looks like. It's, it's lines coming down to the earth, coming from those receivers and coming down to the earth and coming to your cell phones, your TVs or wherever. Whatever electronic uh, electronic device that is. But that's the books being opened before the firmament, man. The Lord is dropping down his doctrine. Let's grab that in Deuteronomy chapter 32. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. It says, give ear, O ye heavens. See, O ye heavens. And who's in the heavens? We are, man. All right. Our conversation is in the heavens. Revelation 12 and 12. All right. Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. All right, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth. All right, this is why <laughs> this is why we're not in distress like everybody is because we're in the heavens. We're rejoicing, man, because these prophecies are coming to pass. All right, so Deuteronomy 32 and 1 again. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. See, I will speak. Let's go into this word speak. Because how does the Lord speak? He speak through the mouths of his prophets, man. Right? And the prophets, right, are uploading their, their epistles, right, their live streams. All right, once again, this is for the spiritual minded, you know. This lesson is for the spiritual minded, right, because we understand that the Lord controls everything that's happened upon this earth. And as great and, and widespread the Internet is, man, you cannot tell me that this was not found in the Bible. That, that the Internet, you know, technology, all this was not, you know, written of. Of course it was, man. All right, because remember, remember, David, David is a prophet. Not only was he a king, but he's a prophet, too. You see, Acts, Acts uh, the third chapter tells you that. So it's about how David was a prophet. All right. All these songs that we've been reading. Right. And we'll continue to read. Lord willing. Hey, you're going to see all these prophecies, man. So he was prophesying on the Internet right here. Isaiah uh, was it Isaiah 46 and 10. The Lord declared right the end from the beginning. So everything that's happening right now. Right. He already declared it and ordained it to happen from the very beginning before the earth was cre created. And that includes the Internet, man. So Deuteronomy 32 and one. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear. Let's go to this word speak. Speak means to, uh, the Hebrew word is Strong's H 1696. The bar. All right. The bar. It says to speak, declare, converse, command, promise. Warn, threaten, to, oh, man, look at this. It says to sing, to sing. What's being sung right now? That new song that we read about in Revelation chapter 14 that only the elect can sing, man. The 144,000 ordained prophets is singing, right? Singing in the heavens, man. Conversation in the heavens, right? Strong's definition says to rehearse. Woo! 
rehearse, man. It says to declare. Is that not what we read in Psalm, what we read in Psalms uh, 19? The heaven shall declare, right? The heaven shall declare the glory of the Most High. Meaning what? It's going to sing, right? We're going to sing, rehearse, talk, teach. Man, this is heavy. It says setting in a, uh, down here in the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, I'm looking at my computer here, it says uh, setting in a row, ranging in order. See? <laughs> That's Psalms of 50th chapter, how he says he's going to set us in order before uh, Esau Edom's face, man. He's setting us in order by, by having his word being pushed out over the internet. And Esau knows that. And that's why he's about to clamp down and, and cut the internet. All right? But at that point, when he does that, it's not going to avail anything. Because the elect already obtained what they need to obtain. It says, as a shepherd follows his flock from the idea of leading, there arises that following. Okay, cool. So, yeah, let's go back. Deuteronomy chapter 32. <clears throat> And let's see, I'm just saying there's a little bit more on here. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 1, it says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine, see, my doctrine, and another word for doctrine is teaching. My doctrine shall drop as the rain meaning come down and that's what happens with those radio frequencies man it come they those lines come down onto the earth all right so it says my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as a small rain upon the tender herb and as it showers upon the grass and the people we're we're the herb we're the grass you read that in Isaiah the 40th chapter right and we're being watered Right by this truth coming down, or this water, this this rain coming down on us, man. The Lord's doctrine, the elect is growing up. Was that Isaiah forty four? How they shall grow up among the willows. Let's grab that real quick. Isaiah chapter forty four and verse three. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. See, and that water is this truth, man. This doctrine that's coming down from the Shemaiah, and that word Shemaiah, right. It means heavens, but that word Shemayim goes into waters, you see? So, yeah, when we read Psalms 19 chapter, yeah, of course, physically, yes, the heavens declare the glory of the Most High, right? His handiwork, the sun, the actual sun, moon, the stars, right? But, right, on the spiritual level, those sun, moon, the stars represent wisdom, man, you see? So, this, this is what we're being, you know, uh, um, fed with. This is the Lord's truth. This is what we're being watered with. So he says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. Talking about our minds. Our minds was dry as hell, man. See, not being satiated with the Lord's truth. All right, he says, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. The actual, the actual descendants of the man, Jacob. You see? It says, and my blessing upon thy offspring and they shall spring up. Among the grass as willows by the water courses. Man. And this is why this word is having a free course. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to Psalm chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of the Most High and showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. That's right. Because the Lord said that his prophets will give him no rest. All right. All during the day, brothers, uploading. Uh, pre-recorded lessons or going live or going out to the camp right all throughout the night when people sleep brother still putting in the work man so that's what it means day unto day unto uh, utter his speech and night unto night showeth knowledge who's showing that knowledge the priest the priest's lips shall keep knowledge what is that malachi 2 and 7 it says for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they sh and they should seek the law at his mouth for he is the messenger. See, the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Woo! Come on, man. And day unto day and night unto night, this knowledge is being pushed out by, you know, by the priest after the order of Melchizedek, the 144,000, man. Right? And we're commanded to give him no rest. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse, um, 
Six, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Mind you, Jerusalem, we were people before we were a place. Right? So as we're scattering across the four corners of the earth, the Lord has set up his watchmen, his prophets. Right? And watchmen, they watch around the clock, day and night. Right? It says, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, Yahweh by Shemal Shah, keep not silence. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's what we're waiting on, man. We're not going to stop. Abba Ratazah, you know, he keeps his spirit upon us. But we're not going to stop until, all right, <laughs> we're established, man. We, until we come back into power underneath Yahweh Bashamal Shah. You see, in King David, man. All right, so let's go back to Psalms chapter 19 and verse 4. It says, their line is gone out through all the earth and that line we we're talking about you know, talking about those those radio frequencies they look like lines like broadbands and that's spirit yeah broadbands man you know and they're broad because they reach across all across the globe and their bands they're, those are lines you see it says their line has gone throughout all the earth and their words see their words now <laughs> the, does the sun moon and stars actually speak no so this lets you know that this is speaking about something spiritual, man. This is speaking about, this is prophecy. It says their words, all right, their doctrine to the end of the world. Why is that? Because we're scattered across the four corners of the earth. We read it earlier, Matthew 28. How was I commanded us to preach his gospel into all nations, man? It says their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Now, let's grab this here in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. Yeah, because, you know, actually, yes, the, the Lord did set a tabernacle for the sun to sit in the sky. Right. But we also know who that um, we, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. Let me get get this first in Romans 10. This is Romans chapter 10. Right. Because Paul quoted the same thing. When he was speaking about pushing forth this truth. He literally quoted what we're reading here in Psalms 19 chapter, letting you know that this was a prophecy, right? So this is Psalm, so like uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse, uh, we'll start right here, verse um, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good news. Talking about the prophets, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. Talking about Jake. For Isaiah also saith, Who have believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of the Most High. Check this out, verse 18. But I say, have, have, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth. And their words unto the ends of the world. See that? Because in the latter days, you read Ezra the second chapter. So like in Ezra, second Ezra, the fifth chapter. He says in the latter days, uh, we're going to gather faith for a treasure. And how's that faith come? It comes by hearing the word of the Most High. Now, who's responsible for pushing out the word of the Most High? The prophets. So let's read this again. Romans 10 and 18. But I say... Have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound, who's who's that there is talking about? The prophets, man. Underneath Yahweh Bashamal Shah. So their sound went into all the earth. Now back then, right, the apostles, you know, the apostles, you know, when you know that was contemporary along with Paul. Did their sound go into all the earth? No. You <laughs> see? They were just preaching, you know, in Asia Minor, you know, Jerusalem, you see. But in these latter days, right, the prophet's speech has gone into all the earth and it's happened by the Internet, man. See, so we're fulfilling this very prophecy right now as the affliction of Zion is coming to an end. Right. The books are open amongst the firmament, the Shemayim, the heavens. You see, so now our sound has gone out into all the earth. And that's why the Lord is about to completely destroy this place, man. All right. So he says, yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Woo! Into the ends of the world. Into the ends of Esau's world, man. 
And then also, when you get um, when you get that word world there, it should be uh, what can mean any. Yep, which means what? Strong's G thirty six twenty five. All right, which means what it says, the inhabited earth, the whole inhabited earth, the world. See, so it's talking about the whole world. And so when, when Paul was quoting this from David, from Psalms 19, when Paul was quoting this over 2000 years ago, all right, he was really, he was using David's prophecy to prophesy what's happening right now, all right, because they didn't prophesy uh, amongst the whole inhabited earth across the Wakimine, you see? Now, across the known world, you see, back then, yeah, they, they prophesied, they preached, right? The doctrine went out free course over there, right? But um, that's happening now across the whole earth by this internet being pushed or by, by, by the word being pushed through the internet. Let's go back here. To Psalm chapter 19 and verse 5, it says, let's start at verse 4 again. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. Now, who, who's known as that bridegroom? Yahweh Shah. All right. And he's known as the son of righteousness. Malachi, the fourth chapter, which says, which is as a bridegroom coming forth out of his chamber. And rejoices as a strong man to run a race. See? Because Yahweh Shah is known as the word, man. You see? And the word, right, through the form of, you know, the him being pushed out in the volume of the book. It's like he's running, he's he, he's running in a race. You see? Having free course amongst, you know, his elect. Because Yahweh Shah is amongst us, man. See? It says his going forth is from the end of the earth. It's like you're from the end of the heaven. And his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. That's right. Because when he comes back, all right, he's going to come back with a fiery, with a fiery blaze, man. And nothing's going to be hid from, from his heat. You see? Malachi chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 2. You see? It speaks about how the day of the Lord is going to be like the oven. Right? And then it, it speaks about how he's the son of righteousness. S-U-N. You see? Right, but right now, the son of righteousness, he's coming, he's coming forth, you know, at his broad chamber spiritually by his word being pushed out, man. You see? And he's he's running in this race. You see? So uh that's oh yeah, that's verse six. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna stop at verse six on this lesson. You know, we'll pick it back up at verse seven tomorrow, Abaratiza. You know, but Lord willing, man, hey, this was edifying. Till next time, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to the Apostle and Elders of Great Millstone, DTA, Ababa Ba'al, Kwamesh Rala, Shalom.